This is Zonkotech Export and today we are taking a look at gaming performance in six different Linux distros because Microsoft has decided to pull the plug on Windows 10 and it might be time for you to test Linux. But if you're a gamer, which Linux distribution should you choose? There's a lot of different uh, distros. You got Ubuntu, Arch, Debian, uh, yeah, uh, OpenSUSE and a bunch of others I can't recall. So I tested Fedora 42, I tested uh, Cache OS, which is the gaming focused uh, Arch based uh, distro. Uh, it's basically Arch on ease mode. And uh, I tested Bassite, which is a Fedora spin. Uh, we'll get back to that later. Linux Mint, which is usually recommended when people want to try Linux for the first time. Pop OS and OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. But which one did come out on top in terms of performance? Well, we're gonna check that out just in a moment. Our test system today was the Intel i5-13600K with 32 gigabytes of the DDR5 6400 mega, mega transfers, I guess, memory. And uh, yeah, PCIe 4.0 SSDs, I guess that's basically all the performance stuff. I, of course, accept the GPU. Uh, that was an RX 6800. Okay, so we're just going to run through some of the Linux distros. Uh, so the most up-to-date Linux distros distro of all of these uh, distros that was Cache OS. So Cache OS that's had the latest kernel and the most updated Mesa driver. Then there were OpenSUSE, uh, Tumbleweed, that was in second place. Then we had Fedora 42, probably Bassite. I, I didn't actually check, but Bassite should be pretty close to Fedora 42 in terms of kernel version. Uh, then we had Linux Mint and I think Pop OS. So I think those two were pretty close to each other, but they were using a 6.14 something kernel. Wait, I made a mistake. So Linux Mint uses kernel, well, used the Linux Mint version I used, used kernel 6.8.0-60 with the AMD Mesa driver 24.2.8. Pop OS used 6.12.10 kernel with the same GPU driver 24.2.8. Uh, also, I think both of these are using X11 instead of Valand, but that's not something we are going to focus on for this video. Maybe we'll take a look at that later, but we are only testing out of box performance here, so that doesn't really matter for us. Uh, as did Fedora 42, but that was 6.14.9, I think, uh, while Cache OS used 6.15 something, I can't recall which one, and the same with OpenSUSE, that was also on 6.15.0, I think. So yeah. Also, we are, we are, we're not doing any customizations. We're basically just installing the operating system and then testing the gaming performance because that's what I think uh, the uh, average Windows user will do. So if you are testing Linux, Linux and the average Windows user is not going to be spending a week and configuring and optimizing their system. They just want to install the operating system, install their games and get to playing. So that's the way I tested. I just installed the, the operating system, installed the game, then benchmarked. We did no optimization whatsoever. So these are the baseline performance. And then of course you can configure your operating system to get like within that, probably a couple of percent of each other. So if you really want like to go with Linux Mint, you can do that and you can probably customize it to perform pretty close to the other ones. You can even can, can choose another kernel if you, if you like. But uh, out of the box performance is what we are uh, focusing on today because I think that's the most important thing for uh, the average Windows 10 user that is trying out Linux for the first time. So with all that out of the way, let's take a look at the numbers. I love the sound of this game. So this is a set of Corsa Competizione. Uh, this is the first game we test and it runs Unreal Engine 4 and we test it with DirectX A11. So performance here is basically identical between the different distributions. We can see that Linux Mint and actually OpenSUSE has a bit worse 1% uh, lows and the Pop, Pop OS has the best 1% lows. Other than that, there's really not much in it in this game. They basically perform pretty much the same, a bit more starting with Mint and OpenSUSE and a bit less with Pop OS. Next up is Cyberpunk 2077 with the ray tracing. And again, the average performance is, I mean, there's three frames, give or take, and that's basically it. But the 1% lows, that's where the differences lie. So here, Linux Mint is really poor with 31 frames per second on average. 
uh, I mean, not on average, but in one percent lows. And OpenSUSE has 64. So OpenSUSE are, is still playable and it's, it's not really that bad. But Mint is really poor here. Basite has the best, uh, no, Pop! OS has the best frame times, uh, closely followed by Basite uh, and Cache OS. If we turn on ray tracing, uh, things look a bit different. So, of course, we uh, basically cut our frame rates in half. And uh, Linux Mint struggles here with 14.4 for the 1% low. It's really stuttery and it's not really playable. Basite is the best here and uh, the other ones are basically identical. So in Death Stranding, Basite delivers the best performance. It's not the highest average, but it's the best uh, difference between the average and the 1% low that they are the closest on Basite. So with 131.7 frames per second and 91.8 for the frame times, it's 8% uh, faster than Pop! OS for the average figure and a whopping 30% better for the 1% low compared to Mint, which was our worst performer here. Uh, in terms of frame pacing. So frame pacing is just as important, if not more important than average frames per second. Uh, other than that, we see Basite, Cache OS and Fedora 42 delivering the best performance, uh, closely followed by OpenSUSE. Next up is Doom Eternal, and this game uses the id tech engine and the Vulkan API. Okay, so one important thing to note here is that Cache OS and Fedora 42 were benchmarked using Wayland. And when using Wayland in Doom Eternal, for some reason, uh, it limits the frames, frames per second to the monitor refresh rate, regardless if you have WeSync on or not. Uh, and that was not an issue with the other ones, because I think those used X11 instead. So that's that's why the average figure is so low on Fedora 42 and Cache OS. Now, uh, if we take a look at the 1% low, which is the probably the more important metric here, we can see that Pop! OS manages 145.1, which is a really impressive frame time compared to some of the others there. And that's I think that's because they're using their own scheduler. And scheduling in this game is important. I'll show you that later. Cache OS uh, comes in in a close second with 139.9 frames per second for the 1% low. That's also pretty good. Uh, while the other ones are noticeably worse. I mean, not noticeable in terms of gameplay, but noticeable in terms of measuring the performance. Now let's take a look at performance with ray tracing. If we turn on ray tracing, again, for some reason, Fedora 42 and Cache OS delivers worse averages compared to the other ones. Not sure why. We are well below the amount of refresh rate here, so that shouldn't uh, come into effect. But yeah, even so, Cache OS still has the second best frame times but Pop! OS delivers the outright best performance in this game with the best average and the best frame times, despite using an old kernel and, uh, well, an older kernel, kernel and an old uh, Mesa driver. So very good for Pop! OS. I think the scheduling is the key here. And I'll show you that now. So let's do Doom again without ray tracing. And on OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, we use the set task and we pin Doom to the performance cores of the CPU. And we take a look at what that does to our average and 1% lows. So take a look at this. With the task set to the P cores on the CPU, we get 4% better averages. So not, not a lot, but, but a bit. Uh, we are using X11, by the way. And the 1% low increases by 33%. So the 1% low figure takes a massive jump. Uh, and the averages, they are like a bit better, but overall performance here is much smoother compared to before. So uh, scheduling is key when uh, it comes to high refresh rate gaming and at least uh, to smooth gameplay. And that's what I think is uh, the problem with Linux Mint. Now let's take a look at the rest of the benchmarks. Next up is Expedition 33, and this game uses Unreal Engine 5 and is running the DX12 API. So the best performer here is Basite, but it's only like 4% quicker than Linux Mint, which was the worst performer uh, for the average figure. For the 1% low, Cache OS takes the crown and it's 46% uh, better than Linux Mint for the 1% low figure. So it's much smoother gameplay, but uh, no operating system gives you a much more uh, average frames per second. But uh, basically every operating system here apart from Mint performs more or less identical. Next up is Farming Simulator 25, and this game uses the Giant Engine 10 with the DX12 API. So Linux Mint has the best average figure here with 93.4 frames per second, being about 6% quicker than the worst average figure for Pop! OS, which was 88.4. But uh, the 1% low again is pretty poor on Mint. Cache OS had the best 1% lows, and those were 30% faster or better 
than Linux Mint. So Cache OS, I think, takes the win on this one. Not by much, though. Again, actually, <laughs> all the operating systems apart from Mint will deliver pretty similar gaming performance. So you're not really going to notice much of a difference. Next up is Oblivion Remastered and Bassite really ran away with this. So 66.7 frames per second on average was uh, like 20% uplift compared to the other Linux, Linux distros. It's possible that Bassite is doing something in the background, tweaking some settings that I am not aware of. Uh, I can't say for sure, but I can say that the in-game settings were identical on both, uh, well, not both, on all of these distros. I even re-ran the benchmark, restarted the computer, removed the graph GPU, reinserted the GPU, restarted Bassite, ran the benchmark again, and got the same result. So this was a repeatable result, and therefore, in my opinion, it's valid, even though I do think it's a bit suspicious. When you look at all the other distros, they all perform about 55 frames per second on average, and then you got Bassite at 66 frames per second on average. It does seem a bit suspicious, but uh, it's the number that I got, so it's what we are going with. So Bassite, a uh, technical win here. But for smoothness, you can't really beat Cache OS. That was 55.5 on average with a frame time 1% low of 49.7 frames per second. That's that's very tight frame pacing, and that's good. That's leads to a more smooth gameplay compared to, well, let's say Linux, Linux Mint. Linux Mint theory is falling apart. It's really falling apart. 28 frames per second for the 1% low. It was incredibly stu stuttery uh, to play. Uh, it was, yeah, a bit like me talking, really. It was, it was not good. It's not good. Uh, good for average frames per second, but it doesn't really matter when the 1% low is that bad. Uh, not sure why Linux Mint is not working for me, but it's it's just not. Uh, if you want Ubuntu-based distro, Pop OS is the way to go. Uh, take a look at the frame pacing here, 55.4 on the average, 48.1 for the 1% low. So Pop OS uh, does appear to be the better uh, Ubuntu-based distro. So if, if that's what you want, I would probably go with that. Now let's take a look at the average performance across all these games. Now here are the average performance across these seven games, including the ray tracing. And Bassite here takes the win, 91.7 frames per second on average. So obviously, Cache Bassite is the best Linux distro for gaming if you want to switch from Windows. Uh, the worst performance comes from Cache OS with 87.7 frames per second. But let's let's be realistic here. They they all perform about the same. So let's let's take two extremes. Well, not extremes, but you got Cache OS based on Arch. It's bleeding edge, the most updated kernel of all of these operating systems, or the Linux distros. And uh, it uses KDE Plasma with Wayland. Pop OS is one the second oldest Linux uh, kernel uh, version here, and it uses a customized GNOME interface, and it uses X11. Uh, and, and, and look at the numbers. They are pretty much identical across the average. So it, my point is, it doesn't really matter which Linux distro you choose when it comes to gaming performance apart from Linux Mint. Do not choose Linux Mint unless you want to customize uh, some of the, the settings to make frame pacing much better, because <laughs> frame pacing is really an issue. Now let's just do a reality check. Okay, I'm gonna normalize for Fedora 42, and let's take it how let's take a look at how much the performance varies in terms of percentages. Okay, first of all, I'm sorry for the mouse pointer. I, 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 I made a mistake on several of these uh, charts. But anyway, normalized for Fedora 42, uh, Cache OS basically identical average performance, but better 1% lows. Bad site, better 1% lows and better average performance. And, and it's like 4%, so 4% is not a lot. Linux Mint, that struggles with the 1% low, we already know that. Pop OS, basically, there's less than 1% difference for the average figure, but 8% difference for the 1% low, probably down to the scheduler that Pop lets uh, System76 builds into their operating system. OpenSUSE, well, it's basically the same as Fedora 42. It's not really a, a large difference there, that's less than 2%, that's margin of error, really. So. That's it. That's a re reality check. Doesn't really matter which one you choose. Choose the one you are comfortable with. So, there you have it. Bassite is the best gaming li Linux distribution today. Well, uh, maybe apart from SteamOS. I did not have time to test SteamOS uh, when it when they released it to the public. 
well, when I became aware that I had released it to the public, I had already done all my tests and uh, I didn't really want to nuke my system yet again just to test SteamOS. So maybe we take a look at that later. But for now, uh, these six Linux distros will have to do. And of these six Linux distros, Pathsight really came with some impressive performance. There are some drawbacks though. So Pathsight is based on Fedora, but it's based on an immutable Fedora uh, distro. So you can't really access your core files. That might be a good thing if you never used Linux before, because it limits how much you can mess up your system. Uh, because you only have read access to those system files, so you can't, you can't basically, you can't use DNF install, for instance, in the, in the terminal. It doesn't work. You have to install flat packs, which are which are basically container containerized uh, app applications. So you need to use the flat pack version of Steam and Mango Hut and all this stuff. So if you want to use Mango Hut, it's it's uh, slightly more involved than just installing Mango Hut on basic Fedora. But uh, it's just like one or two extra steps, so it's not it's not that complicated. If you want to do it, you can you can find a guide and you can do it pretty easily. Um, the second place I think was basically Cache OS. So Cache OS had some impressive one percent low figures, uh, and I think uh, the difference between the average and the one percent low is what puts puts this in number two for me. So I think Bassite and Cache OS are the two Linux distribution I would recommend as would top recommend like my two top recommendations if you never if you never used linux before and you're a bit scared of the terminal use bassite uh, you can get the desktop version uh, it, it comes with the kde plasma which is a fantastic uh, desktop environment which i love and it's really similar to windows so when people say linux mint is they recommend it because it's so similar to to windows I think they are talking about the desktop environment, and honestly, I think KDE Plasma is more similar to Windows than Cinnamon that Linux Mint uses, but that's just my personal opinion. You can, you are free to disagree if you wish. Uh, so, and on the topic of Linux Mint, actually, uh, if you are, if you're dead set on Linux Mint, it's fine. I, I have nothing against Linux Mint, but try to enable game mode or pin the cores yourself. Uh, when you're launching the game, just set the core, set the task to the core, to your performance cores if you're using an Intel CPU. If you're using a Ryzen CPU, maybe that doesn't really matter that much, but uh, you should probably just run game mode because that basically fixes all this stuff for you. And I think game mode will help with the frame pacing issues on Linux Mint. At least in my case, I had frame pacing issues. Maybe you don't. Um, but yeah, so so that's not really one of my top recommendations. PopOS, that they do seem to have a pretty decent scheduler because they also had impressive one percent low figures. But they are on an old kernel, and I do believe they are working on a new version of PopOS with their own desktop environment. But uh, if you want something more similar to Linux, I mean Windows, then you should probably go with Linux Mint or a KDE Plasma based distro. Uh, that's my opinion anyway. Uh, but yeah, so Cache OS, that's what I now use on my desktop computer, also with KDE Plasma. You have support for all of your latest hardware, uh, well, most of your latest hardware anyway. And uh, it's really customizable. Uh, Cache OS comes with a great package manager. It's just, it's it's fantastic, you know. It, it, it's honestly, it's probably Arch on easy mode because I've never touched Arch in my life apart from Cache OS, so I'm not sure how different Cache OS is to base Arch. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it, it's it's really it's a really great distribution that I can highly recommend. It's also uh, the most bleeding edge of all of these distros. Now, uh, when it comes to OpenSUSE, I've used that in the past and I, I actually quite like OpenSUSE as well. But uh, for now, I think I'm gonna stick with Arch or, or with Cache OS. But uh, OpenSUSE is another good alternative that's also pretty up to date. And and uh, when you take a look at the performance figures, there's not really a lot in it. It's just like 4% difference between one and the other. So apart from Linux Mint, which, have, which had awful frame pacing, all these others should be fine. But uh, if you're a newbie, go with Bassight. If you're an advanced user, go with Cache OS. And if you are a competitive player, go with Windows, because those games don't work on Linux. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. And the next video, we'll, we will be taking a look at the RX 9060 XT. So see you then. Goodbye.